the gospel according to st matthew listen to another example there was a land owner who planted a vineyard he put a fence around it dug a hole for the wine press built a watch tower leased the vineyard to the tenants and then went to a distant country when harvest time came the land owner sent his servants to the tenants to collect his share of the harvest but the tenants seized his servants beat one killed another and stoned a third again the owner sent more servants but they were treated in the same way finally he sent his son thinking they will respect my son but when the tenants saw the son they thought this is the one who is to inherit the vineyard let us kill him and his inheritance will be ours so they seized him threw him out of the vineyard and killed him now what will the owner of the vineyard do with the tenants when he comes they said to him he will bring those evil men to an evil end and leave the vineyard to others who will pay him in due time and jesus replied have you never read what the scriptures say the stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone this was the lord's doing and we marvel at it therefore i say to you the kingdom of heaven will be taken from you and given to your people who will produce its fruit the gospel of the lord gospel of matthew chapter 21 verse 33 onwards explaining to us the parable of the tenants parable of the tenants is an allegory what is an allegory allegory is a story in which each of the elements has got hidden or a symbolic meaning however today's scholars say that don't give too much importance to the things which we see there like fence or wine press or watch tower but try to find out the symbolic meaning a wealthy land owner building a vineyard it is quite normal but when we read the further details of the parable like he is building a fence a wine press or a watch tower you know he is trying to build a vineyard with all protection and with all comfort so that all the people who are working there should feel the comfort so that he will be getting his portion in due time without any trouble so that the people who are working there may not have any discomfort because he is building it with, he is building it with so much comfort and we find that he is leaving the place after entrusting the tenants this was quite interesting he is trusting fully the tenants he has no doubt on them simply trusting 100% trust on the tenants and he is leaving the place and we find that how or that he shows some diligence to collect his rent and there was also a possibility for the tenants if the landowner is not collecting regular rents or the portion of the produce maybe after 2 3 years the ownership of the land will be for the tenants so that's why he is sending even though he he knows that there may not be much fruits maybe in the beginning time but still he sends his servants to collect his portion and we find the exaggerated character of this story why because when he was sending the servants they were chasing away all the servants the tenants was not at all giving the portion of the produce or the rent then if in a normal way if we think the land owner should be sending the soldiers and destroying the tenants and will be taking back the ownership of the land but here he doesn't think like that rather he is again trusting the tenants 
and sending his only son for the produce thinking that when they see the son when they see my son they will respect but it did not happen they were telling to each other let us kill the son so that the ownership of the land will be ours so cruel in their thinking the land owner has given every comfort for them to work in every freedom but they, they misuse their freedom they misuse the love of the land owner you see in this parable if we just go on the author of the hebrew expresses the same thought chilling but at this end of these days spoken through us by his son whom he appointed heir of all things let to the hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 to 2 we find this one god is trying to speak through his son and they were not ready to receive even the son the tenants killed the son thinking that they will be able to claim the ownership of the land which was not so convincing but still jesus was trying to tell the chief priest and the elders that you are going to kill me the murder outside the vineyard and we find the tenants take the son outside the vineyard and trying to kill outside the vineyard the murder outside the vineyard will correspond to jesus death on golgotha outside jerusalem therefore jesus also that he might sanctify the people through his own blood suffered outside the gate we find in letter to hebrews chapter 13 verse 12 so god was slowly shifting the responsibility from israel from that tenants to the new tenants that's what we find to the, to the church he was slowly slowly entrusting the responsibility of the vineyard a shift from israel to the church because god is not destroying the vineyard but rather changing the tenants who are there it was quite interesting because we find the same parable in isaiah chapter 5 verse 1 to 2 we find that the owner is building a vineyard and coming for its produce and find out that it's wild grapes he has planted the best grapes but produced the wild grapes so in isaiah chapter 5 verse 5 to 6 we find that he is destroying that vineyard by taking away the fence and allowing all the people to enter and to destroy the vineyard but when we find when we come to the parable of the tenants here in matthew chapter 21 we do not see the destruction of the vineyard rather changing the responsibility from that tenants because jesus doesn't want to destroy the vineyard which means Jesus doesn't want to destroy Israel rather giving them a new name new Israel that is church and entrusting all the responsibility to the church so God established a covenant with Israel planting a vineyard and God sent his prophets as his servants to say to the people of Israel that what you are doing is right or what you are doing is wrong he was trying to convince the people all the faults but they were not ready to listen we find treatment of god's prophet they killed zachariah by stoning him in second chronicle chapter 24 verse 21 and beat jeremiah and placed him in stocks jeremiah chapter 20 verse 2 killed prophet oria jeremiah chapter 26 verse 21 to 23 and we find so many examples how the people of israel were treating with the prophets they were not ready to listen to god and finally god is sending his own son and even they killed him so god has taken 
the responsibility from Israel and slowly shifting to the church and entrusting the church, which means church includes the Israel and also the Gentiles because God is saving all the world. Let's try to think how we respond to our God because God has given us so many responsibilities in our life and how do we respond to our responsibility? If we are not responding it, the same thing may happen here. The responsibility will be taken away from us and we'll be interesting to a new person. Because God is so merciful and compassionate, He doesn't want to destroy us. But rather, we want to come into His mercy. We want to come to experience the repentance. That's why God is waiting for our repentance. We may be feeling that whatever we do is right, but God is telling us, look into yourself. How do you respond to yourself? Are you just looking into your responsibilities and doing it? If you are not doing it, God in His compassion and mercy may not be destroying you, but taking away the responsibility and maybe including somebody else or maybe interesting somebody else to do that. So God is asking us to reflect on us how sincere we are to, to the plans of God, how sincere and faithful to the ways of God. If we are not, this is the right time to come and turn and have repentance so that God in His mercy and compassion will embrace you to the church. And let us do the responsibilities with much more devotion, with, with much more passion. That way, God will help us to, to give more grace and my life will be so much fruitful for me and so that the others also will be blessed through me.